Hi, welcome to the Numerics Video Blog. I'm your host, Jim Jockel, continuing our conversation on 2016 Outlook for Structure Products with Keith Strakula and Tim Mortimer. Thank you, gentlemen. So, Tim, I want to turn to you. Uh, as we were talking with Keith before, um, obviously education, transparency, critical to the growth of structured products in the U.S. Uh, but the last time we spoke a few months ago, we were at uh, kind of a deciding point uh, as it related around PRIPS. Uh, perhaps because PRIPS is so important as a regulatory roadmap for so many jurisdictions, perhaps you could give us a little bit of insight and update of where we are right now. Sure, okay. Yeah, so when we spoke uh, around about June time, uh, one of the uh, earlier consultation papers had, had come out and on the three key areas of risk, costs and uh, investor outcomes, and there was a lot of uh, different alternatives presented to the market, so four of, uh, yeah, to the, to the, to the uh, industry, uh, four or five different uh, suggestions really for each category. There's been a further consultation paper that came out at the end of October, and uh, in, with that the regulators have pretty much defined what they want to do, and um, some of the choices have been quite surprising, um, and not without criticism within the market. Um, on the risk rating side, they decided to use historical data with a um, what's called a bootstrapping or resampling technique uh, to allow kind of simulations, but uh, simulations directly derived from historical data. And it has the effect that most capital protected structured products uh, come out as a one on a one to seven scale, and most capital at risk products are generally five or six. Uh, and that's in a framework which also would. Um, look at mutual funds, which are spread more evenly across the spectrum. Uh, on the cost side, they've done something which is, is quite complex and requires um, a similar approach to the SEC estimated initial value uh, disclosure. And then the, the final piece, which um, probably has a bit, of a, a bit of a way to go, is um, this idea that uh, with the key investor document, which is a typically a two-page document that should have everything that's, um, that's relevant about the product or its terms, its risk, its possible uh, uh, out, uh, outcome opportunities. The, the manufacturers are required to put three different charts to represent a good outcome, a medium outcome, and a bad outcome. And uh, that is not on a probabilistic or uh, outcome weighted, it, it's simply illustrative. And there's been a lot of debate as, you know, is that the right thing if you show investors three charts and label them kind of good, medium, and bad? People naturally think they are somehow in a reasonably equal likelihood, where of course that can vary product by product. So I think there's a bit of, a bit of room to go there. Um, the timetable is all getting very tight now. The, um, the final paper is due out at the end of March, um, or, or probably early April next year, and it's all going to uh, become uh, law in the 1st of January 2017. So we've got a little over 12 months. The final paper yet to come out um, sometime in, in the spring. And all these extra requirements are very onerous for banks, plan managers, and others to um, to actually uh, provide all that investor information. So, that, so the banks and uh, the fund managers are all uh, scrambling around trying to work out what they need to do. And, and, and because everything's not nailed down yet, it's going to be extremely tight. Well, thank you, Tim. And I mean, it's going to be a, a, a fun uh, debate to to watch as it plays out. Uh, you know, Keith, from your perspective. You know, the good housekeeping seal of approval, the chart, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, you know, the credit rating, the world's shortest editorial. From the perspective of, <laughs> of the U.S., uh, you know, where, where, does, where, where does SPA see, um, you know, the potential best m practice for education? Is it, is it a thumbs up, thumbs down? Well, we have had some conversations, including with Tim, setting up some sort of risk ratings of different types of products. One thing uh, that we've been working on for several years, but we're now kind of in the bottom of the ninth inning, I'd like to think, is the so-called nomenclature project, which is a generic classification of all types of structured investments that are uh, coded. So that can be dropped into a Bloomberg page or Yahoo Finance, or retail investor will be able to uh, go onto the website, see exactly what type of product it has with a standard disclosure. So we're excited about that. Uh, the education pro uh, project I mentioned uh, previously uh, as well, and I think we'll get there uh, in, in the second uh, quarter. I think it's also very important to be out there as an advocate, association being an advocate, uh, to proselytize about the benefits, uh, the risks and the attributes of, of structured investments, both to the regulators and to the uh, financial community as well. 
So I would say uh, <clears throat> probably between 12 to 15 percent of advisors may have sold at least one structured note last year. We want to get that up to 20 to 25 percent. Uh, some firms uh, have over 50 percent penetration in them, uh, some of the major wirehouses. So no reason why we can't grow the industry by uh, being out there and explaining the uh, benefits, uh, the attributes, and the risks uh, and rewards of structured and, investments. And ultimately putting uh, working money into investors' pockets. Exactly right, which I think we've done quite successfully over the last five years. Uh, structured notes have been a good place to get higher yielding uh, returns on rates-linked products, uh, to hedge against uh, declines in the commodities markets, and to give kind of the best of both worlds in the equity side where you get uh, an enhanced exposure to the upside as well as uh, protection on the downside. So uh, some final thoughts coming in. Uh, I'd like to get your outlooks, not your personal outlooks, but your, uh, uh, your outlooks as it relates to uh, SPA for uh, uh, 2016. I think uh, it goes back to the education, education, education mantra. Uh, we're involving uh, all the heads of all of the issuers and many of the distributors, we now have uh, executive committees that are responsible for meeting on a quarterly basis, uh, identifying issues that are of interest to the industry, and how we can kind of come together and grow it in the same way that uh, the uh, mutual fund industry has been so successful in growing that investment class. And Tim, let me uh, turn over to you. Uh, what can we expect from FVC? Right, that's an interesting question. Yes, yeah, so we've um, got one big uh, service that we've that brought out to market. Um, it's our stress testing service, which is something which came out of the UK regulator and, um, and also to a less extent on the European side. Um, it, there, there's a requirement for structured product issuers to uh, perform what's called the stress test, which is really a sort of suitability and, um, and scenario analysis of different outcomes, and good outcomes and bad outcomes for the investor. Uh, that's something that they're required to, um, to do now. Uh, which the motivation for that, from a regulator's point of view, is to try and <coughs> prevent bad products coming out to market rather than clearing them out, up, clearing up the mess once it's occurred. That's something that we're uh, very, very heavily embedded with, um, with uh, issuers and um, distributors in the UK and starting to talk to US clients as well. Uh, the, U the US regulation position is somewhat different, but it's uh, as a best practice tool, it makes a lot of sense. We're also seeing, uh, in conjunction with that, um, increased demand for valuation services all the time in the structured product area. Um, and I'm proud to say that FTC is a partner of Numerics. We use Numeric software uh, to go alongside our own uh, data and, um, and methodologies and, and, and client support. So with those two services, we expect to, to do a lot of um, work next year all around transparency and, and looking after investors. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you so much. And, you know, some key takeaways, buffering enhanced notes, got to be protected on the downside. Volatility continues to, to concern, uh, be a concern going into the year. Um, you know, whether the bulls and the bears, it's still up in the air. But thank you so much for joining. And, of course, we want to talk about the things that you want to talk about. So follow us on Twitter at NX Analytics or on LinkedIn. And uh, please feel free to send us your comments, notes, and suggestions. Thank you so much. I'm Jim Jockle.